I'm Stephen Galton. I'm trying to become the MP for the Conservative Party in Southampton Test. Hi, I'm Arnold Whitehead. I'm the Labour candidate uh, for Southampton Test in the March 12th general election. And how important would you say for, it, for students to keep up to date with politics is? Well, this is when, it, you know, never mind, it's important for everybody. And, and that's one of the things, and what we're seeing so far, the campaign, um, you know, we're reaching more people in different ways we're campaigning now. So gone are the days of it was somebody on your doorstep or the odd leaflet. You've now got social media, you've got broadcasting news channels. There's so much information. What I'd say to everybody is it's understand exactly, you know, not every source of information is as trusting, uh, you know, trustworthy and as good as other sources. So yeah. basically look into each subject, listen to each candidate, listen to each um, party and what they've got to say and ultimately, you know, make your own decision you know, based on your own beliefs and what fits with you. In September we had students partaking in a climate strike on campus. What was your take on the strikes and did you do anything to get involved with either the university or the inner city strikes? Well, firstly the idea of climate strikes uh, over the recent period, now that's not just uh, students at school uh, strikes and uh, Extinction Rebellion action. I think it's been a tremendous focus on making people honest about what their commitments are on climate change and that's indeed had a very substantial effect uh, on I think what Parliament's done recently and I was proud to uh, lead for Labour on the uh, motion that went through Parliament to change the targets that we have in the Climate Change Act from 80 percent uh, carbon and greenhouse gas reductions by uh, 2050 to net zero by 2050. Now that is a date that I think is a bit too far in the future but nevertheless that is now where we are nationally as a position. Now the, the difference obviously is in what you do about it and uh, what policies you put in place to actually get there and uh, that's in, indeed what I've been talking to uh, about with uh, a whole range of people both on the strikes and around it um, was very very much um, involved in the Southampton uh, Extinction Rebellion activities um, and we had a very substantial uh, demonstration and uh, strike in Guildhall Square just recently uh, and I was uh, very much involved in both speaking in that and also discussing with uh, a number of the people who were there, um, what exactly we're going to be doing uh, over the next period to actually get to that net zero target and indeed get ourselves to a position where we really can say we've not only decided that there should be that target to combat climate change but we really are actually on track for doing something about it as far as the UK is concerned. So TESS obviously contains the University of Southampton uh, and a considerable proportion of the over 40,000 students who live in the city as well. Uh, with students voting uh, uh, with the majority to remain in the 2016 uh, Brexit referendum and the Students' Union last year backing a people's vote after a student consolation, how do you plan to go uh, about taking, uh, taking the seat when the Conservative Party is the pro-Brexit party in the election campaign? Well, I suppose, you know, the first thing to say is whether you voted leave or remain or you weren't even in a position to have a vote first time round, um, you know, for me, we have to respect the democratic decision, the first one that was made. So, you know, I'm not going to lie and try and say to anybody that, you know, feel strongly about a second referendum. That's not something I personally believe in. I think that would damage our democracy. I think we've had over three years of, uh, you know, effectively arguing over what the vote actually meant. And what we need to do is just basically you know, I'd, I want to say get Brexit done, but I'm sure everybody's probably got the laughing emojis coming at that one. But we do. We need to get it done so we can move on to the other important issues like the environment, as I you know, so passionately talked about today. Um, but it is understanding also that, you know, people do have other beliefs. And I think that's the important thing that, you know, we're, we're leaving the EU, we're not leaving Europe. And Southampton is a wonderful city full of diversity. And, and that shouldn't change, you know. This is about the decision that was made on a national basis, but it shouldn't impact how we do things here in Southampton. Mm -hmm. And throwing it back to 2016 a little bit, what are basically what are the pros for Southampton, do you believe, if we do uh, have Brexit, if we leave the EU? Well, as I say, I, I think, you know, we're, we're really hashing all the 
arguments that have been going on over the last three years about the pros and the cons. Uh, I'm, I'm on record as saying I actually thought both the Leave and Remain campaigns at the time were two of the worst examples of campaigning that I'd ever seen. You know, it was all fear on both sides. I think it's one of the, you know, for the health of democracy in this country now, we do need to just draw a line. We need to move on. We need, you know, we need to make the best of it. Whether you feel that's possible or not, I think let's go out there with a can-do attitude. Let's take advantage of every single opportunity we have out there because it all comes back again to making sure we have that really healthy not, you know, economical situation and economy here so that basically people have the jobs and the wealth and security that means they can live a really good um, quality of life in the UK. Mm -hmm. And one final thing, if you could sum up your campaign and what you believe for in your campaign, why people should vote to you in one sentence, what would that be? I suppose for me it's time for change. You know, it's my new energy and enthusiasm. You know, give me give me a chance. We've had twenty two plus years, as you said earlier, with the, the current MP. I think, you know, I, I want a chance to change and that's probably I've I've probably got on more than a sentence there, but you know, if I don't get in this time, I'm hoping to you know, run again the next time we have one. It took me uh, four attempts to get elected as a, counts a Conservative councillor in Millbrook. So you know, I'm in this for a long run. I've lived in Southampton all my life. It's, you know, it's where I live, it's where my family are being you know, brought up, and it's somewhere that I care passionately about. So regardless, I'm going to carry on trying to make a change as, as well as I can, and hopefully, you know, with your support, that I will actually get a chance to do that as your MP. The final question as well, obviously test comes as the Union of Southampton, but what can your party offer students that other parties can't? The absolute key thing that uh, Labour can offer students is a fundamental change around in how student loans, student grants, maintenance grants are organised. and. What that means for the future is that uh, we would say that um, uh, there will be uh, maintenance grants, there will not be student loans, uh, tuition will be free, uh, and further to that, we will be looking at what the arrangements for present student loans uh, consist of, so that obviously the question of ending the present maintenance and tuition fees arrangements affects future students rather than present students. Uh, we will be looking at what the circumstances of repayment are because we know for example that a very large proportion of grant repayments uh, never actually materialise in the end. Uh, we would certainly look at uh, what the situation is in terms of the interest that presently goes into uh, repayment of maintenance grants so that actually it's not just a question of future students benefiting but present students who have had to bear the consequences of this awful system for funding higher education uh, can actually look to their future a little more securely uh, as well as future students looking to a much better system of getting their funding in higher education sorted out.